is the new group RT3. We are the new reviewers. I've said that twice, but <laughs> I am Downloads Bacon, and with me is Fame, <laughs> and also CC Trainer Ling. So, as I stated earlier, we are the new kids here for LPS reviews. So, choose your episode. Penny for your laughs. Now that you know what episode we're going to review, let's check it out. Check it out! <laughs> <laughs> this week's episode is Penny for your laughs. So the plot here is after realizing her lack of funny in pudding gags, Pepper decides to spice up her routine with insult comedy, and although it starts off pretty well, she soon gets carried away and ends up hurting the feelings of a very sensitive Penny Ling. Meanwhile, after standing up to a bully harassing Whitney and Brittany in gym class, Blythe befriends the Biscuit Twins and becomes their new BFF, much to the dissatisfaction of young me and Sue. So, the first positive I would like to talk about are the songs in this episode. Would be, Be Our Friend Forever and I'm Sorry. This episode is, I think, one of the only two or three episodes that actually has two songs in it, right? Yeah, it has both yeah. the pet song and the human song. Yeah, so if we could talk about the first song that came out, Be Our Friend Forever. I really like that song. It was the first song that I heard from LPS, and I really like the Biscuit Twins, and I really like the singing voices that they have. And it did a very good job with the instrumentals and the vocal harmony, so I really like that song. You also can't go wrong with the amazing totes adorbs outfits that the Biscuits were wearing. And Blythe wore them as well. Oh yes, their outfits. And I like, uh, you mentioned the visuals, so I like the visuals of the, the skull background and stuff. Yeah, and of course, let's not forget the greatest b b butler of all doing those sweet dance moves. He sold the whole song. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, go, Francois, go, Francois, go. Go, Francois, go, Francois, go. It was just breaking it down, yo. Calm down, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, but that one was just really... I can play that one a lot. But the other song, I'm Sorry, was really good also. It was very emotional. And still had some really good visuals also. Felt bad for laughing at him, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all guilty of doing it. I always like hearing Tabitha sing. Especially that the, the voice she uses in this. It reminds me of Minnie's uh, song from A Very Minnie Christmas with the, the her sock song. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned Tabitha singing because as of right now, as of the upcoming fourth season, this is Pepper's one and only solo song of the series. <gasps> I gotta make her sing more. I gotta make Best Pet sing more. I think all of them have had their own solo song, right? Mm, no, um, Penny Ling hasn't had her own song yet, and Sunil hasn't had his own song yet. Ah. The next positive on our list would definitely have to be the moral to the episode, which would be treat others the way you like to be treated in friendships, and don't always try to buy friendships through comedy or through material goods that both the A and B plot did a very good job at explaining. I have to agree with you there. It was done very well. Something that I can admire for at least the first episode that I saw. This was a great lesson to be teaching. Yeah, I like how the plots connected with each other at the end. Yeah, because both of them had a similar like, underlining kind of thing that CDC stated earlier. And they all get resolved with those two simple words, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry you can go a long way, despite being a very... two simple words. It's two simple words that have a very powerful impact. Too true. And plus, it goes to show who your real friends are in the end. Yeah. Because really, if all you're gonna do is try to win back someone's favor by trying to be funny, it's not gonna work. Same thing for trying to keep your new friend around just by giving them a lot of flashy, expensive things like the Biscuits were doing with Blythe and what Pepper was trying to do to Penny. just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah. I think even Penny, I think Penny just, all she wanted to hear, she even says all she wanted to hear was, well, basically Pepper to say she's sorry. Penny, Penny knew what she wanted to hear. Like, just, I'm sorry, boom. But, you know, it was a little difficult for Pepper. Can I move on to Pepper, actually? Oh, sure. I guess we can lead into it. I thought the, the actual plot with Pepper was quite a relatable plot, really, because everyone 
I think most people here, or most people anywhere, have done that one joke that they thought was funny in their head, and and they thought it was funny on paper, and then they say it out loud, and then it annoys someone. It upsets them. It makes them upset because you did the wrong joke. So it was quite a relatable story, really, and just everyone's had that moment where they're like, oh, why did I say that? Well, I think it was because Pepper was, you know, in the moment, she was really rolling with her jokes, she was having a good time with it, and all the pets were really behind these jokes at first, but when you keep digging deeper and deeper into that part of your comedy, and you realize it's starting to get offensive, that's when people are going to start, you know, just turning away from you and saying, just stop telling those jokes, you're really not being funny anymore. Yeah, exactly, like you say, Pepper was in the moment. And I think that handle a lot of people, they, they're in the moment, they're like, oh, this is going to be a really funny joke. And then they say it, and then someone gets hurt. In this case, it was Penny. But slightly, to be fair, Penny Ling is kind of really sensitive, so I think any joke kind of relating to her would make her cry. Mm-hmm. But she probably should have known. It ain't a bad thing. But I will tell you what's bad. The Biscuit Twins. If this is how they really win friendships with people, I can see why a lot of friends leave them. Yeah, I mean, material things are one thing, but a good friend is another. Yeah. I've had many friends that I just, you know, I've had just good relationships with, but if something falls out, I mean, I know to say sorry, not to buy them something, because really, that's not the way to go. And I don't know, I guess the Biscuits are so used to that idea because, you know, they're rich, they're incredibly rich. Yeah. So they know that everyone can be bought, or not to quote Ted DiBiase, but everyone has a price. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, because they also did this thing on Full House where Uncle Jesse would just buy, you know, the kids something, you know, really good, something expensive every single time that he, you know, blew up with them or, you know, did something that he wasn't supposed to do to them just to, just to win favor, because that's what his dad did to him as a kid, so now he's doing it to his nieces. So it's like... It's sort of like a universal thing, not only in fiction, but in real life, and I actually really appreciate that. Yeah, I also thought that although the, the Biscuits thought life to be their friend, I know they just wanted a friend, but it's, I find the, the one line they say to be quite funny was when they were like, everyone wants to be our friend, but we don't really see many signs of this in the series, so maybe they were just saying that to try and make themselves feel better, I guess? There's only those few instances in which there are a lot of people hanging out with the Biscuits, but only if it's at a party. Yeah. But that's and they it. Did, even then, this, the Biscuits are just on their own, so I kind of feel kind of bad for the Biscuits, because they, they just want someone else to talk to and have more friends, but they just don't really know how to do that. They'll get there. They'll get there. Speaking of feeling bad for the Biscuits... I really did feel bad for them when Vi was, you know, bullying them in that gym class. It shows that they really aren't, like, the official mean girls of that school, because there's always a bigger bully than they are. Yeah. I, like, I have to say, I really liked it when Blood stood up for the Biscuits. Oh, yeah. Because it showed that even though the Biscuits was quite mean to Blythe for the most part, that Blythe still thought, no, this is wrong, they shouldn't get bullied, I'll stand up for them. To a very tall bully. Oh yeah, that line though. <laughs> She's just like, try to pick on someone your own size. Oh, she could find anyone. <laughs> Awkward. I just expect when she like says that, I just expect like a, everyone to go like, oh, like, <laughs> burn, burn. Yeah, it's like, damn. <laughs> 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 Two paramedics come in and it's like, oh, it came over because it was a sick burn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for her though, because uh, once Blythe said that, she got really depressed. Like my, like I guess she can kind of bully people, but she can't take it. She's like a kind of a glass cannon when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think this is the only time we see by in the series. I'm, as far as I'm aware, I don't think we've seen her since this. So I guess she was just a one-off character or something. Perhaps in the background. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I don't remember seeing her in the background, but she, she like I said, I, I can't remember every single person in the background. <laughs> yeah, she's somewhere. She appears yes. when you least expect it. Or and of course, she's voiced by that fabulous Kathleen Barr. Just describe that. Of course. That. <laughs> fabulous Kathleen Barr. Absolutely. <laughs> Talking or about me. Kathleen Barr, Tom Lee. 
Yes. But even though her scene was really brief, I, I thought it was really funny yeah. when she didn't understand the life's uh, analogies. Is that what you call them? Abbreviations. Abbreviations. That's the one. And then she zoom when a fly said GMT. Good morning, Mrs. Swambley. This is what we thought she meant. Giant monkeys mean trouble. And I just thought that was really funny. Well, she's not wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that's kind of all I have to say about Mrs. Swambley, though. <laughs> oh, well, I, I got one more positive actually. Now I mentioned before um, Minka. Like, I liked how she talked to Penny. I mean, this is another really small positive, but like when she reached shorter, I just I liked how she spoke to Penny. Like, she spoke to her non patronizingly, but at the same time reassuring her. Yeah. So I kind of like that. It's a really good scene. A little bit of moment there. Yeah. Always a good moment. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's me done for positives. I think that's it. I, I don't have anything else. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm done with all my positives. I got no negatives. No negatives here. No negatives for me either. Well, I guess uh, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Like a present. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Alright, so I guess for me, this episode is the first episode I've ever seen, and I believe ever saw, but no, what the grammar doesn't matter here. It matters to me. Yeah, me too! Silence! <laughs> anyway. This is the first episode I watched. This was one that hooked me in with the two songs being very, very good. Twombly being funny, the biscuits being great. It was just the perfect episode for me to watch to get me hooked into the show. So it has a special place in my heart. So I can't really find anything wrong with it, but there's just, it's just shy of being a 10 out of 10 for me. Always that little thing missing. I can't really say what it is exactly. But maybe one viewing, I'll just change my mind and give it a 10 out of 10. But for right now, I'm going to give this episode a BAM! 9.9 9 out of 10. Oh, sweet! See ya. Oh, I'll go next then. Okay. Uh, my overall thoughts was this episode was... It was a pretty good episode. I really liked this episode. And because I, I really like Peppa. Anyway, she's one of my favorite pets, so it's... It's nice to have an episode that mostly focuses on her. And this is also one of the episodes that got me into the Biscuit Twins. I really like their characters. I mean, even if people would say they're kind of mean in this episode, but I think they kind of had their reasons, but they, like I said before, that they want to just have a friend, but they don't really know how to do that. But I say this is for the fifth episode in season one, I mean, it really does a good job of establishing the characters better, and each. But I still think that later on the series gets better and improves. But I think for, for the fifth episode, it, it does a really good job, and I really enjoyed this episode. But uh, I feel like because I've seen so many other episodes for season two and season three, and I feel like this one's not as good as those, but. It's still a really, really good episode to me. I would probably... I'm going to actually give this a high rating after watching it again today. I'm going to give it a... Oh, an 8.9 out of 10. I mean, it's just... I don't know, it's just slightly shy of a 9. But it's still, still a really good episode. Yeah. Now, as for me, usually my rule is for any TV show I watch is if I'm not convinced by the fifth episode, I usually just turn the series off. Don't go back to it ever, if not, maybe sometime later on. But for Penny for Your Laughs, this being the fifth episode into LPS, I was instantly hooked on the series and I've been watching it ever since. It is one of my all-time favorite episodes from season one. It has a really great moral. It really introduces us to who Pepper really is following the pilot episode. It also shows a different side to the Biscuit Twins that we thought we'd never see this early, but there it is. I really love the songs, really love the character development that both Pepper and Blythe get in this episode, and I have to say that this, again, being the fifth episode in, it really starts to build up these characters in really dynamic ways, and I really respect the show for doing that. So for me, I'll give this episode a 9.6 out of 10. Love it. And those songs... Gotta love them. Yes. Heck yeah! I gave the lowest. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, we got that one out of the way. What will we do next? 
Oh, I have a feeling we're going to do an episode. Let's see. Since I chose this episode, let's see who's going to choose the next one. Theme, you're choosing the next one. Aw, sweet. Uh, hmm. Uh, let me think. Well, what's really popular on those interwebs now? Memes? The World Wide Webby. Hmm. Memes, that's right. The episode? That's right. The next episode that we're reviewing is What Meme Worry. Oh, yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like the best. Yeah, this. I've got a lot of good things to say about this one. We all do. Every single one of us has something good to say. Yes. We yes. all have something good to say about it. So it's, one of the, it's one of the best episodes ever. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is RT3 signing out. Peace out, home slices. Cheerio, darlings. And of course, we'll be seeing you in the next episode. So, thanks, and say it with me now. Thanks again. <laughs>